came in. I forgot the mic. Can I just speak loud? Okay. Um, if you just came in, we do have notes on this session that are right there in the back. And uh, feel free to take those. Our main speaker today is Pastor David Clark. Pastor of the Central Christian Church right here in Beloit, just really right down the street. And uh, I know their ministry at, at Central has been a blessing to our school, but not really our school, but our community at large. I've really come to appreciate the, the community mindset, the outreach that Central has done. And so I'm looking forward to hearing from Pastor Clark. It's the first time I've ever heard, and so he promised he's going to bring his A game tonight. And uh, so Pastor Clark, come on up. Melody, 
Uh, they live in the Beloit area, um, and that's my granddaughter, Emma. Uh, she's going, she's a freshman at Beloit College. And I'm just so grateful. We've lived here all these years, nearly 35 years, and all my children have decided to make this community their home. Our church, their church. They are all actively involved in ministry and Central Christian. Um, we can go on. This is my son Jacob and his wife Miriam. Um, my, J my son Jake served as a missionary in Puerto Rico um, for five years, and that's where he met um, Miriam. That's their son, the most beautiful grandson in the world. I know some of you want to fight with me now. That's my grandson, David. And then, uh, this is Wilkie and Marissa. Maybe some of you know my son, Wilkie. Um, he's been my son for almost 13 years. He came to America when he was 12. He married this young lady that purchased a home in our area. And that's my granddaughter, Bella. Now, I, wanna, I want to... Um, I do want to talk to you about strong families. And I, I would say, if, um, if maybe I had known who I was going to be talking to a little bit better. Um, but maybe, I, maybe God has prepared this. But I want to say this. A lot of what I, I share with you has come out of my mistakes as a husband. My mistakes as a dad. Uh, I am peerless as a grandfather. <laughs> But um, I, I think I, I just tell you this: strong families don't happen by accident. It takes a partnership. I am so grateful for the people, other adults, other Christians who spoke into my children's lives when those biological boys were growing up. Josh and Jacob. We came to Lloyd. My Josh was three years old. Jake was three months old. And through the length of their time. In our church, there were always people who loved us and loved them that would speak our same uh, Christ-honoring values into their lives. And so my boys had struggles. Uh, you know, I, I'd be here all night talking to you about our family issues. But now as adults, they are fully engaged um, in ministry in the name of Jesus and in their love for Him. Um, but I'm so grateful that we had people who partnered with us. Yeah, there's also a price for a strong family. It, it costs dearly. It costs our time. It's not a financial price, unless you want to adopt it internationally, and then it's like 20 grand. Um, but, but there is a, a, an emotional, relational, and, and spiritual price. Uh, but there's always a payoff. There's nothing like a strong family. Nothing like a strong marriage, only by the mercy of God. The Lord has preserved my marriage 42 years. Not because of me at all. The Lord has preserved it by His mercy. The Lord has preserved my boys and my relationship with them. Till now they're, they're my best friends. And I hope one day, many years to come, that both of you will feel that way uh, about me as well. Uh, but it's been the Lord who's preserved my relationship with my children. Uh, and it's come at a price. Most of the price of Jesus shedding His blood on the cross and that blood covering uh, poor, being a poor husband and being a poor dad. Um, the, the resurrection victory of Jesus giving me victory where I was a failure as a husband and a failure as a, a father. But the other thing that every strong family needs, you don't get strong by accident. Strong is not automatic. Strong comes by strategy. And I believe that's the first blank in your, um, your outline there. Um, I, I love the words of Nehemiah, and I'm, I'm going to reference him. But, but Nehemiah, um, and somebody... If you would help me with time, I think I'm supposed to be done like at 7.30, so someone stop me like at 7.25. But look at Nehemiah. Let's read this aloud together. Let's just read the first three words together. Are you ready? Don't be afraid. Y'all need more caffeine. <laughs> Try that again. Here we go again. Three words. Don't be afraid. Are you ready? Here we go. Don't be afraid. Why? Look at the next challenge. Let's read them together. Three words. Remember the Lord. That's our focus. That's our hope. He's the one who preserves. 
He's the one who injects the strength. He's the one that establishes the standard for our marriage and our parenting and the relationships in our home. Remember the Lord. Why? Because He's great and awesome. And what? Fight! You've got to have a strategy that battles for the health, that battles for the spiritual vitality, that battles for Christ at the center. Fight for your brothers, your sons and daughters, your wives and your homes. Fight for your families. Now the struggle I see in our culture is that too many families are better at fighting with each other. We develop this pattern of combativeness where um, sometimes it's a challenge to come home. Or too often it's a desire to want to run away because of the tension we create with our willingness. Now you guys know about covenant love, right? Okay? And you know how they would cut animals in half to make the covenant? Like David and Jonathan cut a, 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 a goat and a ram and a, and a heifer and had pulled the parts, pulled the two halves apart, and they called that the bloody path. It was a, you did a death walk. This is a walk of promise. You walked in, in a figure eight to show that it was forever. And remember David and Jonathan, what they did? They in that bloody path, they stood back to back and said, we won't, we won't fight each other. They exchanged weapons. You remember that? We won't fight each other. We'll take on the world. I've got your back. You've got my back. I'll fight anybody that comes against our marriage. I'll fight anybody that comes against my children. I'll fight anybody that comes against us, but we won't fight with each other. And our, our weapon of choice now is our tongue. And so there must be this commitment to get to strong. Because every family has conflicts, right? Every marriage has conflicts. All siblings have conflicts. But just because you have a conflict, you don't have to fight. Conflicts, you don't have a choice. But fighting is always a choice. A conflict is simply a problem to be solved. Okay, so here's the strategy. Strong families are strategically fun. That's number one because it's the most important thing. And I, I, just to help burn this in your brain, I brought some props. Um, Candyland. Candyland. This is just, anybody can play Candyland? Ever play Candyland? Okay, you know. Um, it, it's just a, a game that really no one can lose and who cares, we're having a good time while we play, but the idea that I will burn in your brain, does anybody here have little children? Here, you can have them. There you go. Um, but the idea is, uh, look, at, look at the scripture. Um, God, here's the blank. God designed life for fun. I commend the enjoyment life. So families in our family, our number one priority should be to make it fun. You see, family is not a boot camp. And if you're behaving like a drill sergeant, your family's going to want to go A-W-O-L. Uh, family's not a business. And if you think you're the CEO, they're going to want to fire you. Family is not a laboratory you're not the mad scientist of your family experimenting with a little bit of this. Your family members are not lab rats. Family is about fun. The joy of the Lord. Then what Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You ever feel worn out? You ever feel at the end of yourself? You ever feel done in? You feel like the pressure's too much or the stress is on? Or that you've emptied yourself in your marriage or emptied yourself in your parenting? Where does strength come from? The joy of the Lord is my strength. And the joy of the Lord is the strength of a family. Now I'll get to where I, at the end where I believe the joy actually comes from. What, where the joy of the Lord, where it emanates from. But the joy of the Lord is the strength of the family. God designed families for fun. People, Scripture says, people ought to enjoy every day of their lives, no matter how long they live. In fact, if they stop enjoying it, they just might as well stop living. Um, now, I'll, I'll tell you, my biological boys, when Jake and Josh were little, we didn't have much money. 
And so we had to do fun on the cheap. If we went on a family vacation, we went tent camping. Um, which, you know, they didn't know any different at the time. Uh, my mom thought it was um, child abuse. To her grandchildren. My mom's idea of camping is a Holiday Inn Express without a pool. Um, but I remember one year we were taking our boys out to the mountains, tent camping, and we ended up the vacation with my mom in a hotel for a few days. And I remember it's so, and this is so gross. I mean, we had been without a shower for a few days because we go into the mountains and uh, no bathrooms around or anything. And um, we had packed our minivan, not with suitcases. But remember those kind of cardboard things you could buy at Shopko, maybe you would think now Walmart, and they were like dresser drawers except they were just little, and that way we'd lift up the tailgate of the minivan, the boys could walk over out of the tent, pull out one of their drawers, pull out a pair of shorts and underwear and socks and a uh, t-shirt. Well, when we get to this really, really, really nice hotel that my mom is uh, bankrolled, that's all we got for luggage. And I'm, I haven't showered, I smell bad, my wife smells bad, my kids look bad. We don't have any luggage, so instead of going through the lobby, this is in uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, sweltering heat. We climb up the stairwell so no one sees us carrying these large cardboard little dresser deals. Well, we get to the door of the hotel room, and we open the door. My youngest son goes in, flops on the bed, and says, Ah, oh, back to the lack of luxury again. Um, my boys when they were little and I'd be taking them to school, I knew that they didn't want to go to school. Um, and I knew they were dreading parts of the day that were coming up. And so I'd get them out in the car and I wanted them walking in the school with a smile on their face and wiped out from laughing. So our home at that time was over by, on Cran not too far off Cranston, not too far off from that Dairy Queen on Cranston, are you with me? So you can envision the Dairy Queen, Dairy Queen Park. Well, I'm driving calmly down the road. The boys are in the back, and I yell, Dairy Queen, Dairy Queen, Dairy Queen, and whip into the Dairy Queen parking lot and just drive around the building shouting Dairy Queen two or three times. They're like, Dad, stop, we're going to be late for school. They are laughing, laughing, laughing. I, I would drive them that far. Now, you know where the Burger King is close to the high school? Are you with me? Doesn't really matter. You've been to a Burger King before. I do the same thing. Where I'm supposed to be driving straight down the road, I just start yelling, Burger King, drive through, pull into Burger King, drive around the drive through, wave at the lady in the little window, do that a couple of times. Dad, we're going to get in trouble. Dad, take us to school. We're going to be late. And so they would just fall out of the car laughing. Going, it didn't cost me a dime other than my dignity. <laughs> uh, I remember one time I was bringing them home from school and did the same thing with the boat ramp down by the Henry Street bridge. And I'm like, Rock River, Rock River, Rock River, driving toward the water. I stopped right when I got to the edge of the water. I get the boys home, they jump out of the car, run the house, throw their book bags aside. Mom, Dad tried to kill us. <laughs> tried to drown us in the Rock River. Um, but, but, but here's the deal. There, there was so much against our families. And, and there are times of just wrenching heartache in, in a marriage and in parenting and in children's lives. They might maybe lose their grandparents or somebody makes fun of them in school. Uh, my Haitian children uh, have taken a ton of racial abuse. And um, I mean, they don't know the American culture when they come here. And, And so there's a lot of bad stuff. There's a lot of stuff that happens in our marriages and in our homes and to our children that just sucks the joy out of them. So we've got to be the generators of fun. Doesn't cost any money, takes a little bit of innovation, takes a willingness to, to lose all your dignity, but God designed families for fun. God designed us for fun. That goes in the next place. People ought to enjoy. Oh, I did that one, didn't I? God, oh, get this, get this, get this. God generously gives us everything for our enjoyment. Isn't that wild? God generously gives us everything so that we have fun with it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Our children, what does the scripture say? Children are a gift from God. Now, I know sometimes 
there a gift you'd like to exchange? Um, but a part of being, part of having a strong marriage, part of having a strong family, start, part of doing strong parenting and raising strong children, raising kids that know how to fun, have fun because you model fun for them and it was a premium priority in your home. Okay, so second part of the strategy. Strong families strategically stimulate stretching. And, and here's my uh, here's my prop to help you remember this. I had to steal this from my wife uh, because my wife is a gardener kind of person, not with the poor vegetables unless you want to eat the flowers that she grows. Um, but watering, watering her plants is everything. It makes them grow, it makes them stretch, it makes that seed down in that little crusty shell fight to break the shell, fight its way up through the stubborn sod, break through the daylight, stretch for the, 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 the nourishment that you give it with water. So this is my symbol for a stretching, growing family. Um, you know what I found? Um, a family where a marriage where both partners are stretching and challenging each other to stretch and grow. Those are exciting marriages. And, and families where parents are stimulating children to stretch and to grow. Those are exciting homes. Have you ever had, anybody have teenagers? Okay, have you ever had your teenager, teenager say, I'm bored? <laughs> have you ever heard that? Yes. I've got four kids of the month of the teenage years. Every time they said that, I said, it's not that you're bored, it's that you're boring. <laughs> excited people, exciting people, are never bored. So be excited. Get excited. Families, where spouses are not stretching and growing, become boring marriages. Families where parents are not injecting, infusing the desire to grow and stretch in their children. You've probably heard this illustration before. A, 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 a rubber band cannot achieve its purpose, cannot fulfill its function unless it is stretched. Um, I guess our greatest example is our Lord Jesus, who you see Luke 2.52. He increased, he grew, he stretched in wisdom, intellectually. So that can be some challenges, some goals for our marriage, that we challenge our spouse to grow intellectually, that we challenge, we lay a challenge for us to grow intellectually. And I, I think I'm, I'm a reader, I love to read, but the most important reading I do every day is my time in God's Word. And I'm a morning person. My Debbie is a night person. She does her Bible reading either at night in bed when I would just fall asleep, or she waits till Lobie and I are gone in the morning. She sets up the Lord's Supper, takes communion, and reads her Bible during the quiet part of the day. And so, though I love to read books, where I want her to stretch me is David. What are you? What is God saying to you out of His Word? What is He sharing with you? Out of his word. And I want to be able to hold her accountable in the same way. I want to be able to hold my boys accountable uh, in the same way. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature physically. And so we encourage each other to, to stretch ourselves, to grow in our fitness, our well-being, that our bodies are the temple of God. And in, in favor with God, favor with God and, and man, you, favor with God and man. Do you know what favor with God means? That means putting yourself in a position so that God is free to bless you. You know what favor with man means? It means that you become such a blessing to others that they want to bless you. Remember Nehemiah again? Remember what he prayed in chapter 1? Pray, grant me success by giving me favor with this man, with the king. I pray that prayer every day. Lord, grant me success by giving me favor with every single person I meet. Grow in wisdom. 
physically and in favor with God and man. Um, I, I think a part of the stretching for those of us who are parents, and uh, my son Josh and I just got back from a trip uh, to Orlando together. Uh, there are times when Jake and I do things together, and Wookie and I do things together, and Lovie and I do things together. Uh, I, I think the most important challenge for stretching is teaching our children the values that matter most. Because out there in the world, they are taught values that have little regard in the heart of our God. They are taught that appearance matters most, the kind of quality of clothes you wear, like particularly my daughter in high school. Well, God's just the opposite. He's all about what's on the inside, your character, not about the clothes you're wearing on the outside. The world says what matters most is how much money you make, how much money you have. God says the opposite. It's how much you give away. It's how generous you are. And so the, 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 the stretching, the teaching, the, when, we, when we pour on the opportunities for growth, it's helping our children grow in those areas that matter most. Being generous, serving people in need. I, uh, I, I love to do work with homeless people in our community. And there are times when I've taken um, my kids out to the homeless camps where the guys are living in tents and, you know, most of the times they're inebriated. Uh, we take them food and uh, clothing and provide for them in different ways. But I want my children to develop a heart of compassion for people I need. Um, how am I doing on time? 717, okay, I'll tell you quick. My daughter Lovia was in class yesterday, pop, political science class, and the teacher divided the students up into three groups. One was a group advocating for Syrian refugees to be allowed in the U.S. One was a group saying, no way, uh -uh, they're terrorists, they're going to kill us, they can't come. And Lovia was in a group that was a part of the audience that listened. And as the, the two groups, you can imagine how heated it got, and how the uh, uh, arguments escalated on both sides. She raises her hands, her hand, and stands up to speak. And um, she says, I, I think you should put yourself in the place of someone who grew up in a third world country. I know what it feels like to be in an orphanage, not to know where your next meal is coming from. She said, in America, I can have a Hershey bar and Cheetos anytime I want. I guess that's the, the American dream now. Cheetos <laughs> and Hershey bar. She went on to describe her life as an orphan in Haiti and said, we, we should be grateful here in America for, how, for what we have and to be able to extend it to people who don't have. She said, my, my brother Wookie, and he's not her real brother, just because they have the same name in our family. But it says he'd never been to school a day in his life until he came to America. Now he's in college. He's bought his own home. She said, I'm going to be a senior in high school next year. I'm going to go to college. She said, when I sat down there, no one said a word. I said, Lovie, I'm very proud of you. I said, that was amazing. What you did was amazing. It was so brave. But what you said as well, think about being in someone else's place who's very, very poor. Who all they knew was poverty. And they're just looking for a place to get some help and to escape her. That, that, was, that was awesome. But I think that's how we stretch. We look for opportunities to encourage our people, our children, our spouses uh, to grow in the things that matter most. Okay, strong families are strategically protective. And, and here's what I've got for this. Um, this, this is a, a, a tarp. This protective cover and I mentioned I would take our boys uh, mountain climbing in the Rockies and I've had them up to the top of the... Uh, I'm just trying to find out how nice you are. I've had them up to the top of the highest mountain in Colorado, Mount Elbow. We've climbed uh, long speed before. Nine miles from the bottom to the top, nine miles uh, down. But if you're up above the tree line and a blizzard comes through, 
You got to have a protective covering. Every family needs a protective covering because you know what? The the, the Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. When a storm of life hammers you, it doesn't care how nice you are or how nasty you are. You get hammered by the storm. It could be the storm of cancer. Sometimes it's mom that gets hammered by the storm. Sometimes it's dad that gets hammered by an unemployment storm. Sometimes it's the kids that get hammered. Sometimes it's grandma or grandpa who get hammered by the storm. But here's what we know. Everybody, every marriage, every family gets hammered by a storm. And so strong families provide a protective covering to handle the difficulties of life. Because not, Lobie doesn't always, isn't always able to come home and tell me nice things. She came home, you saw her in the picture, she has black skin. So it's kind of a challenge for our kids because when they go to school, they're not African American, they're not Hispanic, they're not white. Um, and one of her girlfriends called her a neglect. And she said, Dad, I, I just laughed, but I wanted to slap her face. I said, thanks for not striking. I'm really grateful. Um, but, but the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And our families have to be a place where they can come back and find safety and shelter. I remember taking my son, Loki, one time. Somebody had been really, really mean to him. And taking him to the window of our living room. And I said, look out there, son. Look out that window. What do you see out there? Nothing. I said, out there people are mean. Out there, people are unkind. But on this side of that window, on this side, in this room, in this house, we love. You will always have a shelter on this side of the window. I'm always going to love you. No matter what, I'm always going to love you, and there's nothing and no one that will ever change that. Under this protective covering. Here, here's one of the reasons. Um, because everyone needs help with handling their emotions. Everyone. And the best place to find the help for handling our emotions, how to, how to deal with how we feel, every child needs to know how to interpret what they feel. Because they feel it, and they're going to act out on it. But they, if, they, if we could just help them interpret that feeling, there's possibility for, for better behavior if they just know where the feeling is coming from and what it actually is. My, my dad is... Really easy going, laid back. So I'm really easy going and laid back because I learned that under the protective covering of my dad's love. My dad is high energy and very competitive, and I'm high energy and very competitive, and I learned that under the protective covering of my dad's love. My dad never finished high school. His dad died when he was a sophomore in high school. My dad quit high school to go work and support his family. My dad never gave me a lecture on emotional health. He lived emotional well-being with me in the protective covering of his love. My dad has served Jesus in the church for decades. He was an elder in his church for over 50 years. I learned to love Jesus and serve Jesus, not because my dad gave me a sermon, not because my dad shook his finger, but because he covered me with protective shelter of his love. Um, we need the shelter because we all need to know how to handle conflict. And the, the tendency in families is that we either act like skunks or turtles. Skunks, you know when they're upset, they make life miserable for everyone. They stink up the place with their words and their behavior. And, and turtles are just the opposite. They pull in, they withdraw, they give their loved ones the silent treatment in the cold shoulder. You know what the weird thing is? Skunks marry turtles. <laughs> but, 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 but it's under the protective covering, um, not just of our love, but God's love, that we can move away from our turtle tendencies and our skunky, um, skunkiness. The, the, the conflicts are unavoidable, but we can learn uh, how to resolve them in a healthy way under the shelter. And then uh, I got one more prop. <coughs> because everyone needs help handling loss. Anybody ever play this game? 
Now, chutes and ladders, you roll the dice and you're going to go up or you're going to go down. Anybody can win, but in the midst of it, all of us, sooner or later, have a down time. Anybody can win. I mean, dad can win. A four-year-old can win because, but, but simply playing games because we all suffer loss. Kids lose pets. Grandparents. Friends. And so but under the, the, the protective tarp of a family's love, the shelter of the Holy Spirit, we can learn together how to handle loss in a healthy way. I know I only have just a little, oh, I see a clock. Praise the Lord. The last thing that I'm going to share with you is absolutely the most important. I could have spoken on it for the entire 30 minutes, and that is that strong families are Christ-centered. And I would say gospel-centered. My only hope for the church I serve through the 34 years that I've been pastor is that we would be a gospel-centered church. Now, the Apostle Paul clarifies what the gospel is. He does it. Do you know that this is the very first piece of recorded New Testament scripture? His letter to the church in Corinth. No other piece of New Testament scripture had been written. He writes the first. Under the breath of God, he writes a letter to the church in Corinth. He hits chapter 15, and he says, this is the gospel. If you believe something else, you believe in me. What is the gospel? Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. All those elements are essential, and they must live in a family. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Christ died for our sins, according to not someone's opinion, not someone's preference, according to the scripture. He was fully, uh, he, was, he was buried, the text says. Why? Because he was fully, physically dead. On the third day, he was raised. According to why? The scriptures. Now what does that say? How many times has God resurrected the deadness in the heart of marriage? How many times has God resurrected a dead relationship between a father and a son, or a father and a daughter? Because of what our God did through His Son Jesus, there is always hope for a strong family. And then what does it say? How does that conclude? Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. He was buried. On the third day He was raised according to the Scripture and He made appearances. And Paul goes on to list the appearances. Well, a strong family is a family where the risen Jesus shows up and shows off by making us strong, by giving us his love, by injecting us with his sacrifice. Would you pray with me? Our Father, you are a faithful God. And our only hope for strength in our relationships is a strong relationship with your son, Jesus. Would you please convict us of our need for you through a real relationship with Jesus? In his name we pray. Amen. I just wanted to close with a gift. When you go out, if you have children, um, these are free. This is a gift from our church to you. Uh, pick one of these up, 365 Read Aloud Bible Bedtime Story. Say that three times fast. <laughs> but this is a gift uh, to you uh, from our church. Um, maybe you're like me, and I'm a grandpa, and I would give this to Wilkie and say, read this to Bella tonight. You're welcome if you're a grandparent and you don't have little children, but you got little grandchildren, you're welcome to take one of these for family. God bless you. I'm grateful for the opportunity. My favorite conferences are ones that I walk away with free books. So <laughs> we're doing well so far. Well, I think we got off to a, a great start. I was encouraged. Uh, by the message. You know, I was encouraged just with the idea that here, here's a man who's been in ministry for many years talking to us about families. He starts off by saying, I've learned this all by making these mistakes. And I'm really good at making mistakes. 
Jesus. So that encourages me. Maybe I might be a good father. Well, uh, we are going to go off to our first breakout time. And we're going to start at 7.45. So in about 15 minutes, you can use the restrooms. You can stop and, and grab a snack from uh, our Costa Rica missions team. Or grab some popcorn over here. My wife swears by salt and vinegar popcorn. Um, and I'm more of a white cheddar person myself. But, I mean, there are multiple flavors. Go try them all. Buy them all. Um, so uh, make sure it's up. Topic, Brad, and uh, get to uh, get to know each other. Get to have, we'll have a fellowship here. Now, all of the breakout sessions are right through that door. It's the hallway of our school. You're not going to get lost, trust me. Uh, but each of these breakout sessions has a room number attached to it. Most of them are on the other side. We have one that's right here, right next to our, our child care room. Uh, but the rest are down on the other uh, on the other end. So please feel free to jump in now if. I, I heard some people talking about, like, man, I, I want to go to multiple ones. How do I know which one to choose? Well, we are going to be recording these, and so they'll be available later on the RCCS app. So you can go into your, your smartphone, you can go into your store, if you're, you're, you're an Android user, or those other people, the cult like Apple folks. Um, that I just have to have. Okay, good. Um, you can download the RCCS app. And in the, there'll be a, a section for a chapel, and you can look and you can see those uh, breakout sessions right there. So just go to whichever one, just grab your attention, knowing that you can go and you can listen to some of these uh, later. Just a couple other notes before, but you know, right after that, that uh, breakout session is done, we are done for the evening. But again, you can come back here and grab your snack before you go for the long ride home. Um, we're going to start back here tomorrow at 8.30. We'll start with uh, these breakout groups. But if you want to come a little earlier than that, the uh, Rock County Christian School missions team will be having a, like a light breakfast here if you want to purchase that. And again, all the funds go toward the missions trip. Also tomorrow, we're going to be concluding with a question and answer panel discussion. We'll have uh, three pastors, Pastor Phil Allen and uh, Pastor Tim Johnson and Pastor Mark Grindle. We'll be up here, and if you'd like to ask a question, um, feel free to write something down, or get on Twitter, hashtag Community Strong, and I'll get it right to my phone, and we'll, we can read through that, or send it on Facebook, or, or whatever, or if you're one of those people that just has to write something down, by all means do that, or just, there was this thing that people used to do called talking, <laughs> and as sometimes we still do that. And so if you just want to come to me and add, hey, I'd like to know this. Maybe there's something that we haven't addressed. Or maybe there's something you heard during one of these sessions. And, yeah, I'd like to I just, just provoke this, this thought here that I want to hear discussed. And so that will be your time uh, uh, to do that. So. All right, well, I'm going to stop talking now. And uh, you guys are in